Hello, my name is Trent Melogic and I am the Northwest Area Ag Econ Specialist for the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service. I'll be providing a look at crop insurance basics in this presentation. So for laying the groundwork, in order to determine what kind of crop insurance you need, a producer must identify what type of producer they are. Are they primarily grain, cattle, or both? Also, how many farms have base acres enrolled in either ARC or PLC? As the Farm Bill Commodity Program election will have a big effect on what kind of crop insurance they need. Whereas agricultural risk coverage is a revenue protection product that provides shallow loss coverage, price loss coverage is a, only a price protection product that will not protect against losses in yield. Also, do you have a significant amount of acres that are not covered by base acres? If a producer is planting a significant amount of acres over what is covered by base acres, then they will not have protection from ARC or PLC on those extra acres. Also, do you plant crops that are different than the enrolled base acres? If you're receiving a payment on in ARC County on a loss in yield for wheat and you're planting corn, then that won't necessarily help you in your risk management strategy. So it's important to identify what you plan on planting and how the agricultural programs from the Farm Service Agency will help you with your risk management strategy. Also, what is your risk exposure? Do you have a high debt to equity ratio? Can you survive periods of low prices or do you have to have a high level of income every year in order to stay in business? And you also need to figure out what your cost of production is in order to determine what level of insurance coverage you need in order to cover your losses in the event of a disaster. Also, do you, do you enroll in SCO? Because supplemental coverage option can have a big impact on what type of crop insurance you need to purchase. So determining your coverage requirement. This decision will vary from producer to producer and is highly dependent on the fixed and variable cost of the operation. We'll go through an example later in this presentation. High fixed costs would include a new machinery complement and high cash rents, and high variable costs would arise from low soil fertility, significant weed pressure, excessive cultivation, and other things that would cause a producer to have a high cost of production on their land. So making the crop insurance decision. Here we have an example of a 2016 wheat budget, and our variable costs are included in the budget. We have revenue at 32 bushels at $4 per bushel at $128 for an example. A conservative variable costs are equal to $175 and are all listed out in the table to the right where we see wheat seed, machinery and fuel, herbicide, fungicide, crop insurance, labor, custom hire, fertilizer, harvest, and cash lease. Profit equals a loss of $47 an acre where we see our revenue is not covering our cost of production in this example. So we can adapt the budget as we look at how we're going to decide what crop insurance to purchase. But as we see our budgets are showing a loss at average production and prices. But even though we're showing a loss, it doesn't mean that crop insurance is not important. Our break-even would occur at 35 bushels if prices went to $5, or 44 bushels if prices stayed at our expected $4. If we are a cattle producer, we could graze our wheat and try to provide up to an additional $80 an acre in income, but that would cost an additional $15 worth of fertilizer and perhaps an unknown reduction in grain yield. As we know from research, yields will be reduced by 6% for fields sown at the same time if they are grazed, and 18% if so fields are sowed early in order to achieve a large amount of forage for grazing. Early sowing accounts for two-thirds of the reduction in the loss of the grain yield. And it's important to remember for revenue insurance that revenue insurance covers losses in yield and or price. These prices are set at different times of the year based on the typical marketing of that crop as we have a projected price such as for wheat tracked from August 15th to September 14th. Then we have harvest price tracking for summer sown crops from November 1st through November 30th. This allows a producer to lock in a revenue instead of a yield to reduce price risk. 
Now, whatever that projected price is at the time that insurance is purchased, if the price falls below that price, then the producer's revenue insurance guarantee will be based on the projected price. But if the price goes up after the projected price is set, then the new higher price will be used. So it's the producer will not lose by buying revenue insurance. They will always have the higher of the projected or the harvest price. Yield protection, on the other hand, only protects against losses in yield, not revenue. So price is not included in this, this crop insurance product. This is suitable for individuals looking to lower insurance costs and those who believe prices will trend higher. Know that yields above the guarantee do not always guarantee the variable cost of productions are covered. So yield production is good for producers who do not have to have a high level of protection, but it is a little more risky if you think the prices are going to go down because you will not be protected against that loss in price. A producer also must pick between optional units or enterprise units. Optional units are based on the farms within a section, so it's a smaller unit, whereas an enterprise unit is based on all farms within a county. Optional unit coverage begins at 50% and can go up to 85%, and we see the various subsidy levels listed to the right. 70% is a popular level for producers, and that is subsidized at 59%. Looking at enterprise units, if a producer needs to up their coverage, they can, for the same subsidy level, they can increase all the way up to 80% in enterprise units and still actually have a little bit of a higher subsidy than at 70% optional units. This makes enterprise units cheaper, and it allows a producer to buy up coverage. However, the way enterprise units work, it's a more broad-based coverage where all farms are lumped together. So if one farm is held out and the other farms do well, they won't necessarily receive a payment. Whereas in optional units, the farm that was held out would likely have a payment irregardless of how the other crops produce. So if we look at the premiums for an crop insurance plan under optional units. You see here for a coverage level on the first line of 50%, an actual price of $5.20, and an approved yield of 34, we have a guaranteed yield of 17 bushels based on that 50% coverage level. That's a guarantee per acre of $88.40 and a base premium per acre of $8.52. But that premium is subsidized, therefore what the producer will pay is $3.55 per acre. If we look at a more popular level of coverage at 70% revenue protection optional units, we have an actual price of $5.20, an approved yield of 34 bushels per acre. This is a guaranteed dollars per acre under revenue coverage of $123.76 and a subsidized premium of $9.33 to the producer. So compare that to enterprise units. If we go to that same 70% level, the price is still the same and the approved yield is the same. We have a guarantee of 23.8 bushels per acre and a guaranteed dollars per acre of $123.76. However, our premium is much lower at $3.75, where we can buy enterprise units coverage up to 80% and still only have a premium of $8.36. So this shows how enterprise units can be used to buy up coverage if a producer needs a very high level of coverage for the lowest possible price. So if we try to get to an answer of how can we cover our cost of production, you can see in 2015, under optional units, our guarantee would be 34 bushels times $6.30 times 70% coverage level. That gives us $149 and 94 cents minus the insurance premium of $10.57. So we have a guaranteed revenue of $139.37. Our cost of production was $167 minus $18, which is an estimated 2015 ARC payment. So a producer enrolled in ARC would have to cover $149 of variable cost, whereas their insurance guarantee is $139, so they're exposed to about $10 in market risk. 
if we look at PLC, the cost of production is the same at $167, but we expect a $19 payment from PLC in 2015. So the coverage is $148, or the ver excuse me, the variable cost is $148, whereas our guarantee is $139. If we jump over to 2016 optional units, the guarantee is 34 bushels per acre at $5.20 price and 70% coverage level. We take $123.76 worth of guarantee minus the $9.33 cost of the insurance. We see that we have $114 of covered expenses. If we look at under ARC, the cost of production is $165 in 2016 minus a $17 estimated ARC payment. Our exposure is $148, whereas we only have $114 worth of guaranteed revenue. Similarly, with PLC, we expect a $44 payment in, from PLC in 2016, so $165 minus $44 is $121 per acre, which is much closer to that $114 of guaranteed revenue as opposed to ARC. So the, depending on what program you're enrolled in for the farm bill, it will make a difference on what kind of insurance coverage you will need. If we have fluctuating costs, for example, in 2016, if we decrease our cost by 15%, we'll have the same revenue of $114, but under ARC, the cost of production is $140 minus $17. We have $123 worth of exposure and only $114 worth of revenue guarantee. And our cost of production under PLC is the same at $140, but we expect a $44 payment we have a $96 worth of exposure and $114 worth of guarantee. So we're actually covering our cost of production under PLC with a 70% revenue protection policy. In 2016, if our costs increase by 15%, things just get worse. We still have the $114 guarantee, but under ARC, we have a cost of production of $190 minus that $17. ARC payment is $173 worth of exposure, which is way above what the 70% revenue protection is giving us. And our cost of production under PLC is the same except for the $44 PLC payment, which makes our exposure $146 closer, but still way above the $114 worth of guaranteed revenue. So in conclusion, low prices and low profitability offer an opportunity for good managers to excel. We should be cautious with the expenses that require writing checks as those costs must be covered. The best way to ensure that our insurance is covering all of our costs is to really sharpen our pencil and reduce our variable costs as much as possible. But remember, an average production year could still mean higher prices. So in the future, revenue protection will be important to producers and that way, if you can set in a price and a yield, if prices move higher, you will still be able to take advantage of that. If you would like more information on making a crop insurance decision, please visit the following websites on this page, or please contact your local county extension educator. Thank you.